Hello geometers. So we're starting a new unit called quadrilaterals and we're going to kick that off by talking about polygons. So first, here are all of the polygons that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, you should know at least the first uh, column, so go ahead and make this table on your paper. The first one is a three-sided polygon, is a triangle. Four-sided is a quadrilateral. Five-sided is a pentagon. Six-sided is a hexagon. Seven-sided is a heptagon. Eight-sided is an octagon. Nine-sided is a nonagon. Ten-sided is a decagon. Twelve-sided is a dodecagon. And anything above that we just call an n-gon. So if it was a 17-sided polygon, we just call it a 17-gon. So go ahead and write that down, all of that on paper. There are different ways to classify polygons. The first way is if it's convex. So a convex polygon is a polygon such that no line containing the side of the polygon contains a point in the interior of the polygon. So it sounds kind of confusing, but basically, if you extend the sides of the polygon, it will not intersect the middle. So here I've extended all the sides of the two polygons below. Since none of them touch this middle portion, and here the, the center is still intact, none of the new lines I drew have uh, gone into the middle, then we know these are convex polygons. If you're not a convex polygon, then you're a concave polygon. So if you extend the sides into the polygon, then it will intersect the middle of the polygon. So I just picked two sides, and as you can see right here and over here, those lines have gone into the middle of the polygon. That tells you they're concave. Basically, it looks like someone took a vertice and pushed it in and to make it a cave. Kind of makes sense if you think about it. All right, so here's an example problem. Is the following a polygon? Well, yes, because all of the sides connect. There are no holes. Like if you were pouring water, the water would not get out of the polygon. And what are the attributes of this polygon? Well, first, we'll classify it by sides. There are one, two, three, four, five, six sides, which makes it a hexagon. And then, like we talked about before, conveys, concave versus convex. This would be a convex polygon. Because if I extended each of the sides, then none of them would travel into the center of my polygon. Next, we're going to be using diagonals. We've talked about these a lot so far, but I don't know if we've ever officially defined them. So as a diagonal, um, a diagonal is a line connecting two non-consecutive vertices. We're going to make another table on your paper, so make some room. Maybe over in the margin, write the shape, number of sides, and sum of interior angles. And then we're going to draw out four shapes in a row. The first shape that I've drawn is a triangle, and it has three sides. And as we know, uh, there are 180 degrees in the side, in the triangle. So 1 times 180 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. It's a little odd that I'm making you write 1 times 180 degrees, but go ahead and do it because you'll see why later. Next, we have a quadrilateral. So in a quadrilateral, I can draw a, a diagonal. So I'm going to start at the upper left corner and draw it down to the bottom right. So I've split my quadrilateral into two triangles. So if I want to find the sum of the interior angles, well, it's 2 times my triangles, the degrees in my triangles, 180. And so that will become 360 degrees. Next, let's look at a pentagon. So if I choose my top vertice again and draw down my diagonals, I've cut my pentagon into three triangles. So that's 3 times 180 degrees which comes out to be 540 degrees. Last one I'm going to do for this example is my hexagon. I'm going to pick that top left vertex and draw three diagonals down to the other three points. So that gives me a total of one, two, three, four triangles. So that's four times 180 degrees, and so a hexagon has 720 degrees. 
So now let's take a look and see if we can find a pattern. If we have a shape with three sides, there is one times 180 degrees. A shape with four sides has two triangles. A shape with five sides has three triangles. And a shape with six sides has four triangles. So if you look at the difference between each of these, they all differ by two. Three minus two is one. Four minus two is two. Five minus three is uh, five minus two is three. And six minus two is four. So we have a formula that we can use to find the sum of the interior angles of any polygon, and that's n minus two times 180. And anytime you see an n, it means the number of sides. Let's try an example problem. What is the sum of the interior angles of a dodecagon? So look back up at your notes. How many sides does a dodecagon have? Well, it has 12. So we will use our formula, n minus 2 times 180. And in this case, n is 12. So that's 12 minus 2 times 180. 12 minus 2 is 10 times 180. 10 times 180 is 1,800 degrees total. And every good math answer belongs in a box. So the sum of the interior angles of a dodecagon is, 100, is 1,800 degrees. So next, this is something you should have heard also, is a regular polygon. It's a polygon where all the sides and all the angles are congruent. Since it's regular, since we have all this congruency going on, it has special properties. So one special property we can talk about is calculating just one interior angle of a regular polygon since they are all congruent. So we just take the sum of the interior angles that we just talked about and divide by the number of sides, also the same as the number of angles, to get just one interior angle. So, oh, oops, pretend that wasn't supposed to be there. All right, what is the measure of one interior angle of a regular dodecagon? So we have our formula, n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. So our n is 12 minus 2 times 180 over n. We calculated earlier that the interior angles of a dodecagon so decagon, oh, this shouldn't be n. This should be 12. My bad. So we calculated earlier that the interior angles of a dodecagon sum up to 1,800 degrees. We'll divide that by 12. When you stick that in your calculator, you find that each interior angle of a dodecagon is 150 degrees. Up to this point, we've only been talking about the interior angles of a polygon. So now let's talk about the exterior angles of a polygon. Um, I'm going to start with a pentagon, so go ahead and draw a pentagon. It doesn't have to be perfect or regular. And each of my interior angles, I just named little i. And then I'm going to extend out each side in one direction. So you have this pinwheel type effect. And each of the angles that we created is E for exterior angle. You'll remember these from uh, the triangle units a couple, a couple units ago. So since the I and the E create a line, then we know they're going to add up to 180. Since this is a pentagon, we have five sets of I and E together, and so that's 5 times 180. So the total number of angles we have in this picture right now is 900. We have five I's and 5e. So 5i plus 5e will come out to 900. Earlier we calculated that the interior angles of a pentagon will always add up to 540. So we know that 540 plus 5e is equal to 900. If we subtract 540 from both sides, we find that the exterior angles will sum up to 360. Well, it turns out that no matter which polygon you try this with, the exterior angles will always sum to 360 degrees. Because of this, we again have special rules for regular polygons. If you want just one exterior angle of a regular polygon, you just take 360 divided by n. And let's wrap this up with one final example. Find the number of sides of a regular polygon with each interior angle equal to 160 degrees. 
Now in this lesson, we've learned two different formulas. We've learned the interior angle formula and the exterior angle formula. Well, in the problem, they gave us an interior angle, so you'd think that you would want to use the first formula, but if you take a look at the second one, it seems so much simpler, and it is. So this is our exterior angle formula. Well, can we use the interior angle that they gave us to find the exterior angle? Yes, because as we discussed earlier, the interior and exterior angles are equal to 180. So we know that E is equal to 180 minus 60. Oh, sorry, 160. And so that is 20 degrees. So now we know that 360 divided by N is equal to 20 degrees. Let me make that a little higher. 20 degrees. I want to set up a cross multiplication, so I'm going to divide that by 1. These two multiply, and these two multiply. So 20 times n is equal to 360 degrees. I'm solving for n, so I'm going to divide by 20, and you find that n is equal to 18. So we have an 18 gone. That is the uh, answer to our question, and it is all over. So I will see you next time. Well, I won't see you. You'll just hear me. Oh, well. Bye.